Hey guys, Daniel here, and today I'll be doing a camera overview of the LG G7. Now what you're seeing is the camera footage off of uh, the front-facing camera of this phone. The front-facing camera has an 8 megapixel camera, along it has like other features like portrait mode and AI cam. So to switch it up, I'm in a super low light situation right now. The only thing lighting me is that street light over there. As you can tell, that is my only source of light. And the audio is also coming from this phone. So on the back, there are two cameras one for normal mode, one for wide. They're both 16 megapixels. Their f-stop is different. One of the f-stop is 1.6, the other one is 1.9. So we got all that covered. Let's move on to the camera interface. First thing I wanna point out is the quick access that you get above the shutter button. You got Google Lens, which takes a picture of that item and then it'll try to find information of what you took. Next to it is portrait mode, which is awesome because you get quick access to that mode, which a lot of people probably start using a lot more often now. Next up is AI cam, which takes a guess of what you're trying to take and then it applies the best settings. Then what you can do is apply four filters that they give you that thinks what is best for that picture. But using the AI cam does take a while depending on what you shoot. Sometimes it recognizes super fast, sometimes it takes up to 10 seconds. This camera also comes with a 107 degree wide angle lens and you can get to it by pressing the buttons with the three trees. Also, you can zoom in and out by moving the shutter button left or right or you can do it the most common way where you can pinch on the screen to zoom in and out. So if you really want to share that last picture you took, you can quickly do it by pressing a little arrow on the lower right, pick the app you want to share it to, and you're pretty much one step away from publishing to your social media. For the settings, you don't get too much, really generic ones, so you won't be spending a lot of time in the settings. On the top, you do get a filter setting, so you can pick whatever filter you want to apply to your pictures, and then you get a sticker setting where you can just apply stickers to your faces, kind of like um, Instagram and Snapchat filters. You do have full control on your flash settings, and next to that is the button to switch to your front-facing camera. You can also access to your camera or switch cameras by swiping any direction on the screen. Now, there are a lot of modes on this phone, and one thing you can do is move around these icons to the order you want. So the first mode we're going to go to is the manual pro mode for photo. The UI is nicely laid out on the bottom you get access to all your settings and you do get a little histogram on the side. On the upper right hand corner you do get this little icon and it'll actually give you options to pick a setting or situation you're in and it'll help you out on whatever picture you're trying to take. Next up is manual mode for video and it's almost the same layout but instead of histogram you do get audio levels which is great and then your bitrate information. You also get quick access to your microphone settings as well. Next is Cine Video, and this one's a little bit different. What you can do in this mode is pick an area where you want to zoom into and then you have a slider to quickly or slowly zoom into that area. You do have image stabilization on its phone, so when you're zooming all the way in, it's not too shaky. And you can also apply a LUT onto your image so you don't have to do it in post. This is a fast way to apply some color to your video and then it can go straight to your social media. Flash Jump Cut is next, and basically this is a GIF mode where you just create GIFs. In total, you take 4 pictures, and you do get some time in between, so if you're shooting a person, they have time to switch it up. So this is just a fun mode to have in your phone. Slow motion mode is common on a lot of phones. This one can go up to 240fps at 720p. You have AR stickers, which it's a fun mode to have, but I don't find it too useful. And the last mode is panorama mode, which is common on all phones. So now we can move on to the pictures, and overall, I really like it, especially the wide angle lens. Having a wide angle lens just makes me want to take out my phone and just to take pictures. Overall quality, it's great. A lot of people would like it. During the daytime, it's pretty sharp and the colors are pretty vivid. When you're going down towards the low light end, you do lose quality, which is pretty common on all phones. Portrait mode is also good, so it won't disappoint there. For video, you can check out my cinematic video that I did, so I'll put a card up there so you can check it out after this video. So moving on to low light, it's not that great. You can tell there's a lot of noise and a lot of artifacts showing up. This is shot with the wide angle, so the f-stop isn't as good as the main one, but either way, it's not much of a big difference in the light. So overall, I really like the camera, especially the wide angle lens. To be honest, I find having a wide angle lens way more useful and way more impactful to your pictures than having a telephoto lens. So this smartphone camera offers creativity over a lot of cell phones out there right now. All I really have to say is we need more wide angle lenses on these phones. So that was my overview on this camera. So I hope you guys found this helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.